And now it's time to connect our front end and back end. So back end is running and we are testing that using Swagger and things are working fine. But now it's time to connect this front end. Now the front end is running here. So if I even if I refresh, uh, it has some issues. But what I will do is because we have we have we ran the front end way back in the first video uh, of second video. What I will do is I will just rerun the front end to show you the steps again. Let's do step by step, right? That will that should make much more sense. Okay, the first thing you have to do is open a new terminal here. You can just click here and open the new terminal. Uh, maybe I will do that again. So I will just click here. It is opening a new terminal, and the only thing it is doing it is going into environment. I was I don't want to get into the environment. I will say deactivate, coming out of the environment, and then you have to move to the folder called front end, and make sure you have front end here because we have done that in the first video or second video. Okay, now once you have front end, you need to install the dependencies. So just to give you a glimpse of this front end folder, uh, this is a React application in which. Uh, Basically, you have this package.json. React is a library. That's why we are adding that in a dependency. And then if you want to run the scripts to run this server, you have to say npm start. So those are the things we have to remember. And we have also done the proxy for localhost colon 8000 because when you send the request here, behind the scene, this will work with this particular URL. So we have those things there. Next, you have to make sure that Whatever dependencies you have mentioned here are the part of node modules. If you are doing this for the first time, you will not be having node modules. So I will just say npm install. It will download the dependencies and keep it in the node modules. Now, once you have done that, you can simply say npm start. This will start your front end. And as you can see, it started the front end. This is your front end. Now, there are certain issues. The back end is still running. There's nothing wrong with the back end. But the front end is not working. If you can see, it says fail to fetch the products and you don't have any products. Let's see what is going wrong there. So I will right click here and click on inspect. Let's go to console. And if I zoom the console a bit, it says there is a problem with uh, the cause. Okay, that's one problem. There are more problems which we are going to talk about now. And to understand those problems, let's go back to the project. Now, in the React project, if you go to SRC, now, this app.js, this is where you're doing all the routings, okay? Request sending, response, I mean, accepting the response. So, it is sending a request to this particular base URL, okay? And that's what we have for the backend. So, if you look at the backend, that's your URL. Apart from it, the each request URL changes, right? So, when you send a request for fetching all the products, let's say fetch products, you got this URL called slash products. And if you try to match that with the main, let's try to match it now one by one. So get all products, the same URL, so no problem. Now, when you try to go for the next one, which is this, creating or updating a project, in this case, you are sending a request for the products. Okay, so are we using products for update? No, we are using products. So make sure everywhere you say products. Just for the simplicity, I've, I went for product before, but let's make it products everywhere. Even in put, we have products just to show you. If you, in fact, yeah, put will be using the same thing. But what about delete? So if you scroll down for delete, down, down, yeah. Even delete is using products. So I will say products. So everywhere you have to make sure that you have products. Okay, that's one of the problem. The second problem we have is, which we saw in the console is, this cause error. Now, cause stands for cross origin resource sharing. So, if I zoom it a bit. Now, by default, when you have two servers, example, if you are deploying uh, two applications on the same server with the same port or maybe on the same server, they are okay to work with. Okay, it's because every time you request for something, they know it's coming from the same server, it is safe. But what if the request is coming from some other server? Now, in that case, there might be hacking issues. Now, how do you solve it? And that's where you have to give the permission. So by default, course will always be blocked and you have to give the permission. So how will you give the permission? So you have to go to the main file again. And this is where for the fast API, this app, you have to give the permission to accept from particular client. So by default, it will accept from the same file or same port number. Because if you remember, the swag was running on the same port number. So there was no issue. But your front end is running on port number 3000. That's where the issue is. So how will you give the permission? So you have to say app dot add middleware 
in which you have to pass certain parameters and multiple parameters. So I will just say enter. So first thing you have to mention which middleware you're working with. So I'm working with course middleware. And I think we have to import that. So course middleware will be coming from fast. So from fast API dot middleware dot course. From this we have to import course middleware. Now once you got course middleware, what are the extra parameter you have to add? The next thing you have to add is the allow origin. So from where you want to allow it. And you can pass the list of values, not just one. And I just want to specify one value at this point. So it's HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 3000. This is, this, is from, this is where you have to allow it. Do we have to mention more properties? Let's try. Let's try with this and let's see if something goes wrong. Uh, the server got reloaded. No problem with that. Front end, we don't have to change anything. Let's try with this. And if this works, then we don't have to worry. Refresh. Yeah, it worked. So we don't have to worry about the other parameters. And voila, you can see we got products here. Okay, so this is working. Let me just try to add a new product and let's see if that works. Uh, let's say, not minus one, two. Name, I will add laptop. Description, best gaming laptop. Price is 1599. And quantities, let's say we got only five quantity. Okay, let's see if this works. Add operation failed. Let's see what happened. It says bad request for the products. So we have changed it to products. Let's see. Let's go back to the inspect console. Okay, so for the home page, there is no issue. I think it's issue with the methods. So let's add a few more parameters. I'm just guessing that's the issue. So we'll say allow methods. Because we are changing something, so I will just add all the methods here. So star means all the all the methods. And now let's try. Click on add. Okay. So basically, what we have done is, when you say allow origin, the home page was working because you are reading things. When you say submit, you are changing something to the server. And by default, even submit it does not work. So you have to say allow that as well. So when I say when you say star, it will accept all the methods. So that works. Let's refresh. No problem there. And if you go back here. We got this laptop. Let me try to edit, uh, let's say, pen. So we got details of pen here. You can't change the ID. That's a good thing. And let me change the price to 149. And let me change the description to blue and black pen. You know, sometimes you have this combination of pens where you have single pen where you can change the buttons. Uh, I used to love those pens in my childhood. So submit and it says method not allowed. Okay, something went wrong there. Let me check the console. Okay, so 405 methods not allowed. Which method it is executing? Let me check for update. We do have, okay, now here. It is products. Let me check here what is the issue. Put, that's correct. We got products here. Got products, edit ID. Is this the variable which is creating the issue? Uh, Edit ID from where it is getting the edit ID. So when you send this request, this is working. Uh, blue pen. Okay, I think we have made one mistake here. When I was changing products, I have also removed this part. My bad. Remember the dynamic data because the ID is getting from here, right? I don't know how I missed that part. Let's go back here, click on submit again, and it worked. So it says product updated successfully, but uh, how do I verify? So, yeah, so it's blue and black pin. Perfect. So, edit done. And let me try it one more time. Let's edit this smartphone, a slim smartphone price, let's say just 699. And let's say 51. Update, product updated successfully. Okay, it works. It works. Perfect. Now we can also try deleting. So, we can delete this part, the pen, and pen gone. Okay. And all the searching parts just from the UI side. Cool. So that's how you basically connect your front end and back end. Things are working out. Yes, there are several, there were some issues, but my mistake. Okay. So when I was, I don't know why, how I deleted this part while I typing the S there. Happens. Happens. So that's about this particular project which we have built. Not the front end, just the back end, and we are able to connect the front end. Uh, that's a success, I think. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching.